Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about a very emotional topic, the dairy, the dairy products. And you're going to learn a lot of things. Why is it present in so many different cultures? Why do so many people love it? Is it good for your health? And of course, we prepared many anecdotes and I'm sure you're going to change your vision on that specific topic. So, fasten your seat belts and remember to stick to the end because you're gonna be surprised. Like I said in the introduction, the dairies is a very sensitive topic. Many countries and cultures have it deeply rooted in their genes. We do know about France, but France is not the biggest consumer. India is in front and then you also have America, Germany and other countries. All of them share that common interest for cheese and dairy products. Milk is turned into so many products. Butter, ice cream, cheese, yogurt, and way more. These are the products that we all know for having dairy in it. But that's not it. You can also find milk inside other products where you might have no idea it was inside. Such as pastries, breads, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, and much more. The question is, when did people started to have that big interest into the milk and the dairy products? Is it since the dawn of humanity or is it something more recent? The answer is quite surprising. After the Second World War, we needed something, some food to feed a lot of people. People lost a lot of weight during war because they couldn't find enough food to eat every day. So the government decided that they need a product that they could produce in a high amount and quite quick. Of course, it should have a good nutritional value because otherwise they would have chose the sugar. The time was to act quick, no time to sink deeper, we needed to rebuild civilization. One company proposed to work with the milk, did a few research on it, then discovered it was full of nutrients, and then the product was adopted. It fast became one of the biggest growing food markets. But the milk was not easy to export because the conditions needed to maintain it cold and without bacteria. It could really become toxic if these conditions were not respected. In 1962, the ultra high temperature UHT process was created as well as the refrigerating system. That specific process allowed to export more and to store it for longer periods. That was the start of an even bigger progression on the market. And soon, milk is everywhere. To factories and office buildings, at work or at play, delicious energy-providing milk is being made available everywhere. Even at night, long after most stores are closed, convenient outdoor milk vending machines stand ready to serve plus the latest machines and the newest methods of dairy processing plants, all combined to bring you the freshest, most nutritious milk possible. Milk which only a few hours ago was freshly produced on the farm. The best to be had anywhere in the world today, thanks to today's scientific production and modern packaging. A few years ago, around 10 to 20 years ago, you might have seen this big marketing campaign with all these celebrities named God Milk, where you have all these celebrities with a moustache of milk on their superior lip. The idea showing that milk is cool and milk is good for you. Milk is good for your bones, etc. That was the message. Milk was everywhere, at home, at your school, on your TV and in your magazines. At school, they were distributing it to every kid like a gift from big lobbies of milk and they had a very healthy argument. Milk is full of calcium and it's good for your bones. 
But is that as simple? Is it true? Let's find out. If something contains a lot of calcium and I eat that thing, so will I get more calcium? Well, let's find out a bit more. Let's start with the foundation. What is the calcium? Well, calcium is a metal that is present in the nature, but also in your body. It is necessary to have enough of it in order to ensure a good bones density and also to ensure that your body is working normally with your muscles and nerves. 99% of your calcium goes to create your teeth and bones, but also to repair them. The 1% left goes to coagulation, muscle contractions, conduction, hormones, and one last key function that is breaking the acidity of your blood. So not eating enough calcium is bad for your skeletal system. That is something that we can agree on. The next question is, is the milk full of calcium? What do you think? I give you three seconds to answer. The answer is yes, you probably got it right. The next question is, is it the best source of calcium? Again, you have three seconds to answer. And the answer is not necessarily. That is probably where you didn't get it right. Fear not, my friend, I can guide you through the good information because fish can also be a very good source of it, as well as almonds and, by example, some vegetables. So the good question you should ask yourself is the following. Is the amount of calcium inside the ingredients the only thing that matters? And well, no, it's not. As I mentioned earlier, one of the key functions of the calcium is to break the acidity of your blood. That means that every time you consume some food that is acidic for your blood, then your body will have to release some calcium from your bones, from your own bones, in order to buffer that acidity. And guess what? Milk is part of them. Yes, that's right. Milk is part of these acidifying food. And last but not least, it's not because the ingredient is full of calcium that your body can absorb it. That's another topic. By example, if you take almonds, their nutrients can be absorbed by your body faster and more efficiently. So to the question about is milk a good source of calcium, when we know that that's the main argument and we discovered that drinking milk will acidify your body and lower your calcium levels, then no, the milk is clearly not the best source of calcium you can get. Let's discover right now what the health specialists are saying about the milk itself. Let's make a resume. Calcium for indestructible bones. Proteins to look like a bodybuilder. And immunity to live forever. Am I right? Well, if you listen to the marketers, then for sure. But the reality is a bit different. So what's the problem with milk then? Let's start with the production method. The milk from 1935, by example, it is a completely different product than the milk from nowadays. It was made from a cow relaxing all day, watching, passing the trains, and of course, eating green grass. Nowadays, they are parked inside barriers on concrete and they barely have the place to stand and of course absolutely not to move. They are suffering from diseases due to the presence of their feces and pee on the soil surrounding them. They are on a high risk of bacteria and other diseases, so they are fed with a lot of antibiotics. Some of them in some countries even receive a surgery in order to get implanted a window to give access to their stomach. Can you imagine? 
something that you can open and close in order to access to the content of their stomach. That way, the breeder can control the acidity of their stomach and manage it. That sounds really barbaric. So do you think that the product, the, the milk that is produced right now is the same as the one that was produced way earlier? To me, it doesn't sound like a dream product. I think we can easily accept that the nutritional values and content is not the same as it was in the past. But that's not all. The cows are not eating GMO. GMO means genetically modified organism and they are covered with pesticides. That's fine, right? But in the end, you are drinking their milk, eating their flesh. Well, that doesn't sound healthy to me. Of course, these are my conclusions based on facts and common sense. But what are the doctors saying about milk products? There's one oncologist that I'm following. I read some of his books and I find very interesting on the topic. His name is Professor Henri Joyeux. He is an oncologist and a surgeon. His words were to say in French that people are suffering from lactalism, which means it is kind of the same addiction as alcoholism, but of course to lactose, which means the sugar from milk. So in his opinion, most people are addicted to milk. The first reason would be that we are misled by wrong allegation and marketing. On top of that, some countries have it deeply rooted in their culture, like France, by example, who have it everywhere in their gastronomy. In France, you can't finish a good meal without having a good cheese before the dessert. And of course, the dessert can be made of milk, like a dairy product, or a yogurt, ice cream, or even, I don't know, chocolate mousse, which is also full of milk. That is already some good reason in order to be misled. But on top of that, the government, the government themselves, they misguided us by saying that you should, in order to be healthy, consume at least a few dairy products per day. What kind of science in order to back it up? Well, some studies made by the same lobbies. On the other hand, the real health specialist, they recommend you to stay completely clear of it. But we are talking about the specialists that have no common financial interest in that topic. The one that are interested to tell you what science says, not what their wallets are asking. The gross hormone, the blood acidification, the amount of sugar, they all create obesity, diabetes, they kill the pancreas and favor cancer and Alzheimer. You heard me well. The dairy products are helping to develop all these kind of troubles and diseases that make you think about their motto a bit in a different way when they say that the milk products are your friends. On top of that, due to the too high amount of antibiotics you find in these dairy products, you can yourself develop a resistance to it. Meaning that if one day you're going to the hospital and you have a big need of antibiotics, you might be resistant to it and die of it, die of the disease. A very interesting study in Sweden proved that people doing uh, bone fractures were the one drinking the most milk. The World Organization of Health agreed on that topic. That is really killing the first main argument, the health argument for the lobbies of milk, saying that milk gives you calcium to get stronger bones. The health specialists are really clear, stay away from any dairy products. If you want to have one for your own pleasure, fine, but don't think that you do yourself a favor by consuming it. That's it for the first part of this video. In the second part, we will learn more about milk intolerance, the inappropriate gross hormone that is present in the milk, the milk and dairy alternatives, 
and everything about ecology related to that topic. So stay tuned for the next video and I see you next week.